Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are going to discuss introduction of Java streams. In this video we are going to only look into the conceptual part of the streams. We will see what streams are but we won't be doing any coding. A stream in Java is a sequence of data. A stream pipeline consists of operation that runs on a stream to produce a result. Before we jump into the Java streams, let's look at the pipeline concept, so which would be implemented in the factories in the real world. Let's say I have a factory and the operation of that factory is that I color the signs and I write something whatever my client has asked on those colored signs and then I ship it back to the clients. So for that I need to create a pipeline. So for the pipeline I would have a workstation or a person responsible to take out the sign from the boxes. So these are unprocessed signs that I got from the client. I would set up another workstation whose only job is to color the signs. The third person who is expert in writing on the signs is set up. This is a third workstation. And finally, I'll have a final workstation where a person would pick up the dried sign and put it in the package to ship them out. From the operations perspective, the very first person take the sign out of the box and hand it over to the next person whose job is to color the sign. That person colors the sign and hand it over to the next person whose job is to write on that colored sign. That person would do his job and hand over the sign to the fourth person or the fourth workstation whose job is to put it into the box so that it can be shipped out. And this is the concept of the pipeline that would be implemented in most of the factories in the real world. When I first started using streams, it was very hard for me to conceptualize what is the difference between a stream and the other data structure, let's say a list, because we can always have a for loop, go through all the elements and do whatever we want to do with those elements. There are two main differences that I will discuss in this session, which differ from list versus a stream. The very first difference is we would use a for loop and we would traverse the list and access the elements. In the case of the list, we have an option. It really depends how we code, but we do have an option that we can go back and access the previously used or accessed element. So in this case, I could go back to 40 and perform whatever activity I could. However, in stream, once you hand over the element to the next workstation, then you never get it back. This is one main difference between a list or other similar data structure versus a stream. The second difference is lazy evaluation that I will discuss later in the slides. A Java stream pipeline consists of three main elements. The very first is source. The source is something that will produce the stream. The second part is intermediate operations. And the third part is terminal operations. Source and terminal are the required part of a stream. Intermediate operations is optional. So you don't need any intermediate operation or you can have 100 intermediate operations. Now let's discuss the lazy evaluation part of the stream. So the source will not start producing a stream until it knows that the terminal operation is present at the end of the stream. So if we forget and we do not provide a terminal operation, then the source will never produce it. So that is why stream is considered as a lazy evaluation. And this is the main difference. A list in the other hand, if you have to traverse a list, you need to first create, let's say an array list. You need to populate the elements. So that population, so you already generated the data, which is kept in the list. And later on, you have an option, either you can use the data on the next line of the code, or you can use the data, let's say 10 lines below after doing something else. Or in the worst case, you might not use that data at all. So this is the second main difference between stream versus a list or other similar data structures. For the certification and also for uh, programming in general, you do need to understand the differences where intermediate operation and terminal operation, how they behave in different scenarios. So the very first scenario is required part of a useful pipeline. The intermediate operation is not the required part of a 
pipeline. So pipeline can exist without an intermediate operation. However, we cannot have a pipeline without a terminal operation. The second scenario can exist multiple times in a pipeline. The intermediate operation can exist multiple times. So we can have multiple intermediate operations and they don't even need to be unique. You can do one operation like multiple times in one pipeline. However, the terminal operation cannot exist multiple time in a pipeline. When the terminal operation is hit, the stream ends. Return type is a stream type. For intermediate operation, when the intermediate operation is finished, the return is stream so that it could be handed it over to the next intermediate operation. So the return type will be stream, but for the terminal operation, it's not a stream. It will depend on what you're trying to do. For example, let's say you have a stream of numbers and you're trying to do an average. So then, then the return type is a number. And let's say you have a stream and you want to convert it to string, then the return type is string. So the return type of the terminal operation will depend on your business logic. Executed upon method call. Intermediate operations are not executed when they are called. However, the terminal operations are executed. Stream valid after call. When the intermediate operation method is called, the stream is still valid. However, for a terminal operation, the stream isn't valid and now the stream has been terminated. In the factories, we would have a foreman who would organize the pipeline and organize the work that is being done on that particular pipeline. In programming, Java serves as a foreman when working with the stream pipeline. Let's have a look at a couple of examples to see what will be the duties that will be performed by Java when we work on streams. So in this first example, we have a very simple pipeline where we want to take out the sign out of the box and then we want to paint them and then put it into the pile. That's, that's all. These are the only three operations that we would do. So we give this instructions to Java and those are done when we do a declaration of the stream in programming. Once the foreman knows, or in our case Java, once the Java knows what it needs to be done, in this case, he will set up a workstation that will be taking out the sign of the box. He will set up a second workstation whose job will be just to paint the sign. And then he will have a third workstation who will be putting those sign into the pile. So for our example, let's say we have two signs to be painted. So the first sign will be taken out by the first workstation, hand it over to the second one. The second will paint the sign, hand it over to the third one. And the same process will happen for the second sign of the box. And when the Java sees that there are no signs left to be painted, then the Java will end the whole pipeline. And in the second example, it's pretty simple pipeline again. So what we are doing is we are taking out the sign, we are painting the sign, and we only want to do it for the two signs and then put them in the pile. So in this example, Java will set up four workstations. One, to take out the sign from the box. Second, to paint the sign. Third, to count the sign, how many signs has been painted. And the fourth, to put the painted sign into the pile. And let's say, we have five signs in the box. Now the very first sign is taken out of the box, it's painted, and the third person whose job is to count the sign will count it as one, because it's the very first sign being painted, and that sign is being handed over to the next person to be put on the pile. Now second sign is picked up, that sign is painted, and the person who is counting counts that this is a second sign, and that person tells Java that this is the second sign and Java will wait for that sign to be put into the pile. So in this case, Java knows that the job is done and now the pipeline will be terminated. That is all I wanted to discuss in this video. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified for the upcoming videos. Starting from the next video, we will look into the programming examples of what we have learned conceptually in this video. Until next time, bye-bye.